Okay, so I'm going to paint a picture for kids, sort of cartoon landscape. Uh, could go in a kid's bedroom or nursery. Um, I've sketched out roughly what it's going to look like. Um, you might be able to make out some of the characters here. There's going to be a couple of dinosaurs, a, a worm, an elf and a giraffe picking apples from an apple tree in a sort of uh, typical English rolling hills landscape. Um, the first thing to do is uh, paint in the sky blue. So uh, I'm adding a lot of white to this blue because it dries too dark. I've got the sky blocked in. Now I'm going to work on the hills in the background uh, to make them look more distant. I'm adding quite a lot of white, a little bit of blue, giving a sort of turquoisey colour. And then the idea is I'll use bolder colours, greens and yellows, in the foreground. Trees. Yeah, so what I'm working on right now is getting darker green under all the characters. So that will become their shadows a bit later on. A shadow for the chin. What you'll notice is that I'm painting through my guidelines. Uh, that's so that I'm not left with white spaces around all the individual elements at a later stage. This has all looked very rough and ready at the moment. So I'm going to go over it all later towards the end of the painting. Well, this is quite tricky working with a two-year-old kid. <laughs> of course, the uh, little two-and-a-half-year-old can actually help. That's right. What's this? You're colouring in yellow. That's right. That's right. Good girl. Thank you. Very helpful. Okay, and while my little helper colours in the uh, draft, I'm going to block in the tops of the trees now. And I'm doing this slightly dark because I put the highlights on afterwards. And a much bolder colour than I used for the background. What shall I do green? Um, do you want to do this tree here? bit of yellow at the top of the tree to make it a little bit lighter. That's where the main highlight will be when I go over it to give the impression of leaves later. Careful, careful, careful. I'm standing up so I can reach. That's right. Basically. Okay, I've had to change the angle slightly uh, because my helper insisted on continuing to help. Um, <laughs> having moved it and prepared for that, she's now left. I mean, you can see the, the uh, beginnings of a picture emerging now. And um, these are the characters that are going to be in the foreground. I'll start now on the trunks of the tree and I've got the rough background put in. And so you need a sort of brown colour. Dark under there. And you can see the bottom of the tree I've deliberately made darker than the light top. Um, that will be more pronounced when I paint in the leaves. Not that it's going to be highly detailed, but it'll give the impression of uh, the light hitting the top of the tree and <laughs> making a shadow underneath the tree. And all we need to do is create the impression. Trick your eyes into thinking I've really bothered to paint I that. I have my paint brush. 
Yes, you may. There you go. Which paintbrush would you like? Um, this one. Okay. Okay, what I was going to say is you don't need to worry about having your toddler painting. I mean, you know, this is a painting lesson. What better way to learn than hands-on? However, uh, there are limits, and this line what that she's put in I here, up above do? the tree, is going to be very difficult to get rid of because the whole I point do? of doing the sky first is you don't want to be messing about with the sky afterwards, right? Because that's the back layer, and so you want to put subsequent layers on top of it. So uh, this is a problem. But all this stuff, you, you can easily, uh, you know, make it look a little bit better later, you know. And under, at the bottom of the tree, there we go, there we go, that's it. Yeah, nice, good girl, good girl. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, getting good, almost like leaves, that's it. Yeah, yeah. good, good. Yeah, good, 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 that's good, yeah, nice. I'm doing some apples. That's it, we'll do the apples later, it's not ready for the apples yet. What are, what are these characters doing? What are the dinosaurs and the giraffe doing, Amy? What are they doing? Picking apples. That's right, they're picking apples from the apple tree. There we go, now do you want to wash your brush? Yeah, Amy, you wash use a little bit of yellow, a little bit of green. And then look, watch Daddy, look at the painting. Just uh, flick it like this. Lots of, lots of lines up, that's it, get that on your brush. And then just go like this, at the bottom of the painting, you're painting in the grass. Up, like that, like that. See how Daddy's doing it? Lots like this. Yeah, that's it. It's on the grass, on the grass, okay? On the berry, sir. Just on the grass, on the grass, here, in the grass, there, like this. Yeah, that's it, that's it. You keep doing that, and I'll try and uh, fix this tree. So as I say, you can just paint over what you've already done. No, you, you keep painting the grass. So you're, you're helping, not hindering, helping. Helper is busy blocking in the giraffe in yellow. You'll need more yellow on your brush, I think. You need a bit more yellow on your brush, don't you? No, that's right. And I'll get some yellow and uh, block in the owl. This is a yellow owl character. Whoopsie, you have done the sky yellow. Ah. <laughs> Whoopsie. That's right. Whoopsie. Just because the paint's not particularly thick, I'm going to use some white to cover up where the blue shows through. Oh. And I'll do the same on the giraffe. Yellow giraffe is standing on the grass. Are they standing on the grass? That's right, they are yeah. standing on the grass, aren't Let's they? No, Daddy, Turway. Let's go, Daddy, Hedgehog. No, Daddy, so Daddy, Hedgehog's not in this one. Do you think he should be? Yes. Would it be a better picture with Daddy, Turway? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, so far, I've managed to uh, manage having a little helper. Um, but I don't think we can go much further now because it's all a case of adding detail. Um, so uh, I think we'll have to take a break. Okay, so the uh, next stage, while my little helper's not around, uh, is to quickly um, get this background finished off, just adding a, a little bit of detail. So uh, these are going to be trees in the distance there. So. branches and tree trunks. And a brush. A round uh, shaped brush. Put a few 
highlight I'm just adding some white into this to keep it sort of a little bit grey in the background not too colourful just blow on a few highlights now, I don't want to add too much detail in the background but uh, I can pick out a few pieces of grass maybe in the sort of foreground a uh, relative foreground be quite vague just smaller strokes as you go back this is, the idea is to decorate the kids bedroom so you want uh, a lot of things in there keeping it simple Shadow here, and I'll add a sheep in there, just in the distance. And I'll add one over here under this tree. So I'll add a bit of shadow where the shadow under that tree. Okay, let's put the sheep in. So again, I don't want them brilliant. Well, they can be white sheep, but I don't want them brilliant white. I'm making this all grey. Big blob, this is where the <coughs> woolly coat is. Um, this style is a little bit like Sean the Sheep, so it's gonna have cartoon eyes and a sort of hairdo. No, it probably looks white, but it's not like it's grey, so it should dry a little bit dull so that it looks distant. I might as well finish these off while the camera is live, so black, but I'm going to add a little white to it, so it's a dark grey. And those sort of handlebar-like ears that sheep have. Now using a more rounded brush, I'm going to add the highlighted leaves onto this tree <clears throat> to give it a more cartoony feel. I suppose it's going to look more like a lollipop. <laughs> so on my brush I've got yellow and green. And just generally brighten it up, which is why I'm using a lot of yellow. Hopefully that gives some sort of illusion of uh, leaves. I've left it dark here deliberately and less so here but still quite dark because that's going to be behind the characters so it'll be in the shade of the characters and it will make them stand out more because they'll be bright so it'll give it some contrast. Um, might quickly brighten up these uh, tree chunks then. So uh, now it's ready to put on the apples. Uh, these characters are picking apples. And to do this, I'm going to work from a real apple. Um, it's just easier, because uh, you can see what it really looks like. Um, if you paint something approximate to that, it will be more convincing. And you can see where the highlight falls and things like that. So I've tried to emphasize the, the redness, because uh, in this for a kid's picture, we want juicy red apples, a uh, sort of stereotype there. Um, I'm going to highlight them and add a little bit of shadow underneath to make them really stand out from the, the tree. So the apples should be standing out a bit more now. Um, when you're doing the dark bit underneath, I, I just used the dark blue um, and it's gone a little bit green where there's a little bit of wet paint underneath, but uh, you don't really need to use a black. Um, and when you're adding the highlight, you want to put a, a confident, bold, sort of white blob, and then if it needs a little bit of uh, shading, you know, grading, you can uh, wipe your brush and then just brush in with a you know, sort of mix it in like that. Um, but you don't want to mix in all the white because uh, you want a definite white highlight look. Because it's shiny, the apple. 
almost ready to start work on the characters. Before I do, uh, I'm going to paint in this grass in a little bit more detail that's behind the characters. I don't really want to be doing that after I've done the characters because I might accidentally flip grass up onto the characters. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, so this is all about uh, adding richness of colour to separate the foreground from the background and as I said uh, just making sure it's this bit behind the, the characters is finished really. So yeah, you can see I'm just doing lots of upward strokes using I've got three different colours, yellow, a mid green and a sort of dark greenish blue. And I'm not fussed about this bit in front of the characters yet, because I'll do that after the characters. So just blocking in the characters now. This is a yellow owl. He's up in the sky, the light's going to be coming from above. And this will help make it look like it's an object rather than just a flat two-dimensional thing. And of course it needs a bit of shading. Now, it's yellow, this one, so I don't want it to be too dark. So I'm using orange as the shadow. This is instead of a bold black line, or I mean I could use brown, I suppose, but I want to keep this very, very bright, this character. And then of course here's the Same thing for uh, this character, Diplodocus. I think it's supposed to be pronounced as Diplodocus, but Diplodocus sounds cuter. Uh, you could call it Brontosaurus, I suppose. Um, this colour is created using uh, blue, black, and quite a lot of white. I'm going to add a lot more white. Uh, I'll show you the highlight again. So, again, assuming that the sunlight's overhead. Section. So you can kind of imagine it constructed out of different sections. So each section has a highlight on the top bit, and there will be some kind of corresponding shadow on the bottom bit. And a nice uh, highlight on his back. His back can be catching a lot of light. There's such a big area there. So you can see uh, the very light at the top. I've kept it quite dark down here. I'm actually going to use a little bit darker grey uh, just to really emphasise the dark underneath the belly because there's going to be a lot of shadow down there. And put in the suggestion of a back a leg, you know, the leg the other side of the body is a four legged creature, but it's not two legged. notice I've painted through the characters that are going to be in front of it. It's exactly the same principles as the background. You know, I'll paint these characters over this one to some extent. So a little bit on a bit of shadow here just to make sure it is less confusing. I'll apply quite a high contrast to the tail because there's some action going on here, he's picking the apple. Um, the idea of that is uh, to avoid, hopefully I can avoid a black line, I think a black line around the whole thing. So I uh, just want to emphasise that the tail's passing in front of his neck, right in the back of that leg. Now the giraffe here needed a bit more white work um, to make him stand out in the background because uh, well because of the uh, help that I received earlier on um, so he's going to need another coat of uh, yellow and orange to really bring him out boldly a bit, a bit like I did with the owl 
Um, I've also noticed I've missed an apple. Like, he's supposed to be holding an apple in his hand. Here, so I'm just put that in. It's a little bit bigger than the apples in the tube. I don't think that matters because his arm's a little bit nearer the viewer, so it should be okay. With these cartoons, I quite like playing with perspective anyway. This character here, for example, is going to be a worm. Now, uh, he's clearly like a giant worm. <laughs> if he's that big, and this is a, a different Dokodontosaurus thing, so yeah, who cares? It's a cartoon. Yeah, so these uh, yellow characters are going to need to be revisited at a later date. Now I'm going to do the simplest character of the lot. Happy Worm. He's a, he's a pink worm with a uh, white collar. And just like the yellow character, the pink is obviously a very bright colour. So I've just used a darker pink, just mixing them in a little bit of red for the shadow. And uh, these flicks of lighter colour I've got in here, these are where the segments are going to go. I don't want to just draw black lines across it. I'll shade it so each each segment becomes a sort of section of the world. So uh, here you can see I've blocked in all the characters here, except the mushroom I'm going to work on now. Um, the elf here is a little bit more complicated than the others, I suppose. And it's a range of different colours. Um, again, each piece has got a kind of highlight and then a shadow underneath. Just brings it out. This mushroom. And even with this simple mushroom, of course you want to highlight the top. Ah, coffee's ready. And add shadow underneath. Here I'm using a dark blue. Generally speaking, if you want to add a shadow to red colour, you can use a dark blue and it'll change into a kind of dark purple shadow. And uh, I've added some, it might look like black lines, they're not actually, it's uh, using blue and orange uh, to get that darker line. Of course it's a cartoon, but I don't want to really have to go around the whole thing with uh, black outline at the end. So. Um, I'm just picking out some of the bits where I do want a, a dark line uh, as I go along now. I'm um, just going to add the detail, so I'm going to add some spots onto this one, stripes onto this one, and some spots on the giraffe. Then I'm going to put in the grass in the foreground, and finally add some of the black lines. Might not use black, though. <laughs> the blue seems... Uh, dark enough. So um, as I've painted these sort of purpley brown spots, I've added the highlight, but I don't bother with the shadow here. Uh, same. These have got a highlight stripes, but uh, no shadow. Um, some areas, like here this one's slightly darker, so less highlight, but also you're using the sort of natural transparency of the paint, so the darker yellowy orange beneath that just naturally makes it a little bit darker than this stripe. Um, so you can use that transparency quality. Okay, spots on the giraffe, and uh, then it's just filling in the final details. Okay, so apart from the uh, foreground grass, I've basically finished the colour. Now I'm ready to unleash the black, um, which will finish it off, basically. Um, I've added in the eyes here, the characters that have white eyes, just white blob with a bit of um, grey underneath. You can use any darker colour really just to give it a little bit of a three dimensional shape. So I've started by uh, just adding in this hat. Uh, I should point out at this stage you have to be very very careful. Um, if you mess up the black it's quite difficult to correct it. You'd have to repaint sections and things and then getting the right colours to match. You might end up repainting quite a lot of the painting just to correct a small mistake. So you really need to get this right. Um, here I'm using a, a dry, fairly clean brush to 
get this blending going. I don't want to blend it too much because I want that strong highlight there. I'm basically just dragging some of the highlight into the black paint. Now I'm going to drag some of the black paint the other way into the highlight. So now I've put on the, the detail that I really want with the black. I'm going to uh, dot the dragon's eyes, as they say, to finish it off. Just putting white blobs in the uh, pupils to make a highlight. Mm. So this is why. Uh, you keep the background as vague as possible because you don't want to be messing about doing grass in a lot of detail here. Um, I'm not doing it in any detail at all. You can watch me just finish off this corner here. Bit of uh, mid green, just lots of vertical strokes really. A few darker areas. You can use your strokes up or down, it doesn't really. That I tend to flick it up and um, basically I'm just doing more darker strokes where the shadow is and more lighter strokes where the sunshine would be falling but there are some darker strokes even where it's lighter. Now obviously you could uh, carry on adding detail and adding more and more detail build it up more richness of colour and so on indefinitely actually but uh, for the purposes of this tutorial and uh, this painting it's finished <laughs>